be telling about Indian monsoon. We'll go quite deep into this today. You cannot say there is one reason for the Indian monsoon. Let's now deal what are the proper reasons for Indian monsoons. One reason is temperature, and next comes the subtropical westerly jet stream. and then itc is it intertropical convergence zone and then tropical easterly jet stream along with the action of the tibetan plateau and we have the effect of el nino and southern oscillation which we together combinedly called as enso and then La Nina. La Nina and El Nino are both are Spanish words. La Nina is for Spanish girl child and El Nino is for Spanish male child. Now we'll be dealing with them individually. How they are affecting the Indian monsoon. Firstly, coming to temperature. You can see that in the northern part and the northwestern part, the temperatures are very high. But these temperatures will create low pressure. will accept but the thing is this low pressure is not enough for the monsoon winds to come into the indian subcontinent let's see why it, will, it is not being possible one reason is being let's suppose this is the indian coast as the low pressure is created in the northern part the winds from the equator comes like this from australian region but because of coriolis force they will be turning like this so this is that is why i'll call it as southwest monsoon and this will divide into one is the arabian sea branch and the other is the bay of bengal branch okay but what is the reason why this low pressure is not being able to attract the winds monsoon winds the reason being subtropical westerly jet stream so basically what do you mean by jet stream so these are winds which are traveling at around heights of 1200 meters which is favorable for the jets to fly in this area so that is why they are called as jet streams so subtropical westerly jet stream we'll deal quite deep into this firstly we have to know about a point called pamir knot so what this pamir knot is it's a junction point you can say for the himalayas and the tian shan kulun shan and one more mountain range is there so these subtropical westerly jet stream will be coming like this and at the pamir knot they will be dividing into two branches one is going to the northern side of the himalayas and one which will be settling in the northern plains so subtropical jet uh, these jet streams as i already told you they will be at the height of 1200 meters so they will be having a low pressure at a height of 1200 meters and they will create a high pressure on the ground so if there is a low pressure at the height of tropospheric level and it will create a high pressure at the ground level this law will call it as by balance law and iska vice versa bhi it is true like uh, high pressure on the uh, near the troposphere and low pressure on the ground is also true so because of the high pressure which is being created on the ground level even the low pressure is being created because of the temperature the high pressure which is created by the subtropical westerly jet stream is being dominated so the thing is these monsoon winds are staying like uh, some the watchman at the door that is why they are not entering and when they will enter let's suppose and then after some time uh, let's say june actually the monsoons will be arriving at the end of may to 15th of june this is the timing for them actually most probably so when june comes the temperature and along uh, this equator tropic of cancer and the tropic of capricorn by june 
The sun will be moving nearly to the Tropic of Cancer by June 21st as we call it as uh, solar uh, summer solstice and uh, they have made it as a yoga day also international yoga day. So by the time the ITCZ will be approaching towards the Tropic of Cancer because of this ITCZ uh, approaching towards the Tropic of Cancer the subtropical westerly jet stream high pressure on the northern plains will be shifted to, uh, to the north of the Himalayas. Okay, so then the low pressure will be strong enough to attract the winds. This low pressure will be strong enough to attract the monsoon winds. And then as the high pressure moves up, there will be the burst of rains. And this is why it is called as monsoon burst. Okay. And because of some reasons, the high pressure may again reappear. And then because of the again uh, high temperatures of the sun, again it will move northwards. It happens and there will be a, you can see break off for 10 to 15 days in between the rains in monsoon seasons. So this 10 to 15 days break is termed as monsoon break. Okay, now we are clear with the three factors which are causing the Indian monsoon. One is the temperature and the ITCZ and the South Tropical Westerly Jet Stream. Now we will come to the Tibetan Plateau issue and the, IT, uh, and the Tropical Easterly Jet Stream. So there is a theory called Kutishwaran theory. No need to remember the names though. So this is our Indian subcontinent. Let's suppose this is the vast table land Tibetan Plateau and here you have Mascarene High in the Indian Ocean. Masculine high, why? Because it's always high pressure over here. So Tibetan plateau, because of the summer heat, it will be very hot and then low pressure is created. As I already said, if low pressure is on the ground level, you have high pressure on the above tropospheric level. And the same, appro uh, same approach comes here also. If you have a high pressure on the ground level, you have a low pressure on the at the tropospheric level. So the winds from this high pressure will move to the masculine high low pressure area above in the tropospheric level again and you know about the atmospheric wind circulation the sinking point will be the high pressure area right and from again this high pressure you will have movement towards the low pressure like this okay so it is forming a loop right this wind you will call it as tropical easterly jet stream and because of the high pressure to low pressure movement from masculine high to the tibetan plateau the monsoon winds will get extra force which will be again resulting in more rains all over the india basically okay this is one theory about the tropical easterly jet stream and the tibetan plateau and coming to the elino part if you see the world map let's suppose this indian and uh, you have uh, North America over here and uh, this is India, equator, this is part is North America and if you suppose this is South America, this part of the Pacific Ocean is the Eastern Pacific Ocean and this part is called the Western Pacific Ocean. So actually you have Peruvian current over here as you all guys know this is a cold current because of some reasons this cold current is replaced by warm current okay because of upwelling or seasonal movement of waters or because of equatorial current whatever the reasons might be so here every time you have high pressure and because of the warm uh, sun temperature low pressure is created here because of the warmer waters so the movement will be from high pressure to low pressure here this is a vertical cell. Every cell is a, a vert uh, vertical cell, but this cell is a horizontal cell. This is called Walker cell. This horizontal cell is called Walker cell. This is a normal condition when high pressure exists at the Peruvian coast and low pressure at the Australian waters. So because of the warm current being uh, replacing the cold current, here the pressure will become less than the pressure over here. So this results in reverse movement of the water okay 
so this situation of low pressure and high pressure will call it as southern oscillation okay the complete thing you will call it as el nino there is no much difference between this the complete thing is called as el nino the pressure difference is called as southern oscillation okay where and where you will be measuring the pressure differences there is a place called darwin in the australian waters and tahiti in the eastern side of the pacific ocean okay so you will be measuring the differences of the pressure at tahiti and darwin to know about the el nino la nina or it's a normal year so if the value is positive that means here you have high pressure and here you have low pressure if it is positive it is a normal year if it is negative it is el nino and if it is much more positive you will call it as la nina which is an opposite of el nino so these are the reasons through which yeah indian monsoon it gets affected how el nino affects let's see it uh, much more clearly so here you will have a low pressure at the peruvian coast and you have an uh, high pressure at the australian waters so the thing is it will be in a result mo uh, in inward movement right reverse movement so it will not be affecting the monsoon winds from the mascarene high clear right so we can say that el nino is a negative effect on the monsoons but you cannot say always that el nino year is always resulting in bad monsoon there are many results uh, many factors right we have seen already if even one factor fails it will results in a less rainfall itself directly but there are years like 2004 when el nino year is there but no drought has been resulted in india and one more thing is the i forgot to say initially is the indian ocean dipole indian ocean dipole dipole by the name itself you can say two poles one pole is the mascarene high in the indian ocean and the other being the warmer waters here okay so warmer waters obviously low pressure so again there is a loop from high pressure to low pressure moment so this moment will again force the monsoon winds towards indian subcontinent which will result again in rainfall so these are the reasons and i have already said to you the monsoon winds are uh, divided into two branches one is the bay of bengal branch and the other is the arabian sea branch let's see which branch is stronger and which branch is not basically arabian sea branch will not have that much effect on the indian subcontinent as such the bay of bengal branch has had let's suppose by june 1st the monsoon winds have reached the kerala coast it uh, monsoon tra winds travel at around 30 to 40 kilometers per day so by june 15th or something like that they will be reaching the sorry 30 to 40 kilometers per hour they will be reaching the maharashtra region by june 15th so and then you will have a aravalli ridge over here aravalli mountains which is the residual ones right right now once they are fold mountains as the winds are being parallel or the mountains are located parallel to the winds they will not obstruct and uh, they will not be resulting in the orographic rainfall so these winds will be going like this and no effect will be seen on the gujarat kutch region or the rajasthan region here okay but the bay of bengal branch which will reach the west bengal and the northeastern regions over here and uh, it will be covering the ganga regions everything andhra pradesh region not tamil nadu tamil nadu it will uh, it will be see, uh, discussing later okay so this somewhere around in the up mid of up regions the arabian sea branch will be meeting the bay of bengal branch okay and by mid of september something like that the winds from the bay of bengal region will be the winds the winds from the bay of bengal uh, branch will be reaching the rajasthan region by the time the moisture which is carried by these winds have been uh, completely over and uh, the first removal will be from the re, uh, like river self of the monsoon winds we'll call it as retreating monsoon from rajasthan again so we we'll, can see that there is less rainfall in rajasthan so one effect of the tropical easterly jet stream and this uh, retreating monsoon will be causing rainfall 
in three parts one is the tamil nadu coast other is the ladakh region and the shivalik region these three regions will be having a rainfall during the retreating monsoon when no other part of the country will be having rainfall and remaining like uh, winter rainfall you might have heard about this in winters also you can see rainfall in the north and the northwest regions especially the reason for this is the western cyclonic disturbances it's like the subtropical westerly jet stream which we have discussed earlier it will bring the seed from the temperate cyclone and it will result in the rainfall in the north and the northwest region though it is not of a much significant quantity it is called as cyclonic rainfall only okay and one more thing you should keep in mind is no temperate cyclone will have names names were given only to tropical cyclones okay and this is what is about indian monsoon